Hello designers, welcome back and in today's video I wanted to talk about something that's really been catching my eyes as I've been shortlisting candidates for UI UX positions. While many designers showcase their work on platforms like Behance and Dribbble, there's something that uniquely stands out about those who create their custom websites as portfolios. And guess what? In this video, I'm going to take you through Framer which is a fantastic tool that makes turning your designs into live websites super easy and fun. I personally love it because it just works like a simple design tool but at the same time has the power to output real responsive websites. And in this video, we'll get to see how to turn your Figma designs into live websites. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. So here we are on Framer's website, which is framer.com. And once you land here, it's pretty easy and straightforward to open an account and it's also free. So just tap on the open Framer button here, which will take you to the sign up page where you can use your Google account to just freely sign up. And once you sign up, you're free to explore the tool, create websites. And it's only once you want to publish it, that's when you basically need to go for a package and uh, as you scroll down you can see the different features that Framer provides and it's a beautiful website right and again all this is built on Framer itself and before we move on to the actual tutorial I also wanted to show you one more thing in Framer which is the Framer marketplace once you go to framer.com slash marketplace you will end up on this page where you have different templates right and most of these are free you can just filter it out uh, with free as well and I'll show you the free versions so you can see right these are just amazing templates which you can get started with so if you're not much into design you can just pick one of these templates and tweak it customize it to your purpose and publish it as well right so these are completely responsive and beautiful design trend websites right but if you're someone who wants to create their own unique thing as a designer then you're free to do that as well and that is what we are basically gonna explore in this video so this tutorial I'm planning to divide it into four sections first is design then we export then we prototype and then finally we'll end it up with publishing the website so in design we'll basically choose a, a design from Figma. So it won't be my design. Probably we'll go to the Figma community and pick a random simple design so that we can see how we can take any random design and, you know, convert it into a website, right? So let's go back to framer.com and I'll tap on open framer. So since I've already signed up for an account, you can see that I'll directly move on to the workspace right here. And uh, right now there are no projects because this is a completely new user account. So I wanted to show you everything from scratch. So we have the account ready. And the first thing we'll do is open a new project project. So just tap on new project and this should load up a new project for you. So here we have the new project with one page right here. So quickly I'll take you through the interface so that uh, you're familiarized with it. So once I tap on this layer, you can see that I have contextual properties to uh, with respect to the layer that I selected. And as you can see on the left, we have layers, assets, assets is all about components, styles and stuff. Then we have pages. So all the different pages for your website. And at the bottom, you can switch to dark mode, light mode. That's really awesome. And we have the different tools. You can also ask people to comment on your designs and here we have the option to play it also finally publish it which we'll be seeing at the end of this video so now that we are done with explaining the interface quickly let's jump onto figma and start with the first step that is picking a design right so jumping to figma right now i'm on the figma's community page and here we'll probably search for something as we decided we'll go for a portfolio website so i'm gonna search for portfolio website let's see what the community has to show us. So there you go. We have these amazing templates on Figma. So let's try to pick something which is simple and nice. Something random, right? So this one looks good to me. So let's probably check this one. Okay, so this is the thumbnail and here we have the design. So let's just zoom in. Yeah, this looks good. We have the style guide, probably we don't need it. But this whole page is a complete landing page for a portfolio. Open this in Figma. So that's going to open up the design. So this is your thumbnail. We won't be needing this and the style guide also. We don't need it at the moment. So let's focus on this landing page itself. So we have the complete landing page and everything is editable. That's really good. And we can see that some of it our components which is also really good there are certain groups but a lot of things are auto layout as well the designer has done a good job here a couple of more points on the design uh, itself right so since we are going to export this to framer if you're able to add auto layout in figma itself that's a great thing because all these properties like auto layout and constraints get exported to framer as it is and which makes a job much easier on framer so that's all about the design so now let's jump onto framer and see how we can export this right so the first thing is let's 
let's see the dimensions of this website. So if you see the width right here is 1920, which is slightly more than we generally use, right? So if you come to Framer right here, the default value it starts for a desktop is 1200. So what we can do is let's take a middle ground. Let's, uh, you know, keep the width at 1440, which is a uh, standard practice. So I'll come back to Figma right here and I'll use the scale tool and let's scale this down to 1440. So now that we have the size sorted, let's start exporting these designs to Framer. So we are right now on the second step of the tutorial. So I'll select the header right here. And if I go into the header, you can see everything is auto layout, but there are these empty spaces, right? So we'll probably get rid of these in Framer so that we'll get to understand how that works. So I'll select the header frame right here, go into plugins and in the plugin sections, let's search for Framer. And the first plugin that you'll see is basically Figma to HTML with Framer, which is the plugin that we are looking for. So just tap on this and what this does is it copies all this and converts it into Framer layers. And as you can see at the bottom, 12 uh, layers are copied. And now all this design is copied into your clipboard. All you have to do is come back to Framer and just paste it. Or you can right click and say paste or you can use a, a shortcut command V or control V. So I'm just going to drop it into this desktop page. And as you can see, it works pretty well. The shadow has come in, the text, the color the auto layout. So auto layout in Framer is basically called as stack. So if you select this, you can see that this is a stack layout. So there are two layouts, stack and grid. We'll talk more about that. But as you can see, it has copied. And the other thing I forgot to mention is it's better to, you know, copy a uh, section by section into Framer. You can actually copy the whole page as well, but there might be some issues. So copying it section by section and sorting it out on Framer is a, a good practice to do. So we have our header uh, on Framer. So we can preview this by using this play button right here. So if I tap on this, this is actually a website so which you can scroll through and you can resize this as well. So the resize doesn't seem to work that great, right? So that is because we need to fix a certain things in the layout so that this works. So let's come back here. So if I jump into the layer tab right here, you can see that there are some extra columns. Basically, the designer uh, might have added this for the spacing purpose, but I'll just delete it because we don't need that. We can just select the main container right here and come to distribute and make this space between and that will evenly space everything. So let's see if this has fixed our uh, responsive issue. If I come right here, and there you go. We have basically kind of fixed it. Now these are sticking to the right and the left, which is good. But once we come to the tablet and the mobile, this doesn't work out right. So it's actually breaking. For that reason, we have to start uh, bringing in breakpoints. Right now it's only desktop. And the best part about Framer is you can add breakpoints and it works seamlessly. So I'll just tap on this plus button let's go for a tablet and then let's also go for a phone, right? So now we have this tablet and in the tablet, this one seems to work fine, but still I think the padding can be slightly reduced because we don't need so much padding as a desktop. So I'll click on the header layer right here, the nav bar right here, and then we will go to the padding. So let's make this 40 and 40 in tablet. So this looks good to me. And in a mobile, I basically don't need this navigation anymore, right? So I'll just delete this column, which I don't need in terms of a mobile. Mobile. So I'll just select this and let's go to the padding. So in a mobile, probably 20 and 20 should be good enough. So this seems to look good for now. So let's see if the responsive part is working. So there you go. And in a mobile, it looks like this. This is a tablet and this is a desktop. Great, right? So that sorts our header. So our header is set. Now let's come back to Figma and copy the next section, which is the header or the hero section. So I'll just select on this, uh, right click, go to plugins, and we'll just run the last plugin, right? Because we already run the plugin. It's all about repeating the action. So you can use a shortcut or just go to this action, which is run last plugin. And that's again, copying every uh, component right here and converting it into Framer. So it's done. Copy 10 layers. We'll come back to Framer and paste it right here. So we have pasted it, but if if I drop it here, it's not snapping into this layer, right? So for that, we need to convert this parent layer into an auto layout. So I'll just tap on this desktop, which is our parent layer, and I'll add a layout, which is nothing but a stack. And as soon as I tap that, you can see that it got snapped onto this, right? So this one works as an auto layout. I can, you know, move it up, move it down. That seems good. And if I see the tablet version is getting cut, right? So we need to fix the breakpoints for these. And in the mobile, it's totally broken. So let's quickly 
fix this on the tablet and see what we can do. So on the tablet, all you have to do is just tap on this section. Since we don't have a space towards the right, obviously what we'll do is we'll try to bring it down. And for that reason, you just tap on this direction as vertical and that kind of fixed the issue on the tab. So let's try this on the mobile as well. You can see that the text is kind of big. Uh, we'll fix this later, uh, but you can see the tab and the desktop seems to be working fine. I'll just run this and see how it looks. So it looks good, uh, but there's a gap here and I believe that's because of the auto layout gap or the stack gap. So let's come back, select the desktop layer and here you can see that the gap is uh, set to 10, right? So we don't need gap between each of the components. So for that reason, I'll make it zero. And if I play this one, yeah, that's fixed. And if I try the, the responsiveness, yeah, it seems good, but only the mobile, as I mentioned, we'll have to fix it. So let's come back to mobile and let's see what we can do it here, right? So I'll select the text. The issue here is basically the text size is uh, a lot. So for that reason, I can just come here. We can reduce the size, but before that, just select the parent stack right here and we'll change the width to fill. So that should kind of get it into the center. The other thing is the padding is a lot in a mobile, right? So I can just select the main parent layer here. Let's go to the padding and we will change the padding here, you know, to 20 and 20 and the top padding is also a lot. So let's change this to 40 and the bottom padding to 40. So this kind of fix the issue, even the character that we have right here, I think we can change this to fill and that will kind of fix this here. We can again change all of these to fill the container so that it doesn't overflow the parent container. So all you have to do is select this one seems good. This one and this one needs to be set to fill. So the width can be set to fill and that kind of sets the issue, right? So let's kind of play this and see what we have right here. Yeah, that looks good to me. We have a slight override here. So let's see what's the issue. So if I come into the mobile, you can see that the height is set to fixed. We want it to fit the content and that kind of, I think fixes the issue. So let's play this and see. I think that works. Everything seems to be sorted. We have this responsive page on the desktop. It should move to the right. Yes. There you go. We have the header and the hero section sorted out. Let me just quickly fast forward this part and bring in all the sections that we need. So everything seems good, right? There are certain things we need to focus on in depth to fix it. So let's just play this and see how it looks. So on a desktop, this is like perfect replica of what we have it in Figma. And if I try to resize it into a tablet, so the tablet version also looks good. So let's come back and see the mobile version. So this is your mobile version and that's how your mobile version is looking. So that's great, right? So within a couple of minutes, we were able to achieve this responsive design. Since since we are done with exporting everything and making it responsive, let's jump on to prototyping and see what kind of interactions we can add and how to make this a more lively website, right? Uh, we definitely need to add different pages. Right now, we just have the home section. We need to build out the portfolio about me and testimonials, which is all about creating new pages. So I'll just create new page like this. And this would be uh, your portfolio page and same way you'll create your work page, about page and more, right? But let's focus on the home page for now. We have the home right here. So let's see what kind of animation we can add right quickly. Let's see what we can do here. So first thing is, you know, the hover on buttons is a very common thing. So you can select the button right here. I'll go into layers. So this is your button layer. All you can do is, you know, create a component and that way you can add different animations to it. So for creating a component, just right click on this and you have an option to say create component. Just click on that. We'll call it a button. That's good. And we'll come on a layout like this. So you can click on this and, you know, add a new variant to this, which could be a pressed one, which would be a hover one. Uh, so on hover, we'll do something, maybe just change the color for now. So probably we'll make it a darker color for a hover effect. So that's it. You added your hover effect. If I go back to pages, come back to home, I will play this and there you go. You have your hover effect, which works pretty good, but let's see what more we can do, right? So probably there is another cool thing we can do is animate things as they appear, right? So let's select this section itself. Since we are already here, I'll just select the whole section here and go to effects and add a scroll transform, right? So once you add a scroll transform, you want this to happen, not when you scroll it, probably once you uh, start seeing this layer and that's nothing but layer in view. And once you do that, this is your uh, keyframes from to the final keyframe, right? So from keyframe can be something like this, probably a little more opacity down. I'll scale it slightly more. And maybe if you want, you can add a 3D animation as well. So kind of you want it to flip and open. So let's keep it at 
this two is your final which is good and you can add a transition this can be spring and there are different kinds of animations that you can add here or you can change it as well okay so i'll leave it at spring for now and now let's uh, play this and see how that looks so you saw that right it just basically appears as you scroll so once it comes to view it just pops in right it's basically flipping in 3d and coming into view kind of explain the very basic animations right here but you can uh, do a lot more uh, let me just explain you one more thing uh, probably this is quite important uh, that is having your nav bar as a fixed element or a sticky element at the top so all that can be done from the type right here so i'll just make this as a fixed component and that makes your header as a nav bar as a fixed component so if i play this you can see that your header is fixed at the top and let's say you want to uh, stack these uh, sections one by one right so for that reason you can just select the layer right here let's do it on this layer so i'll just select this layer right here and then you can make this as a sticky so let me add a fill for this one as well now let me just play this you saw that right this is getting stuck the my expertise section is getting stuck and then the next about me is overlapping it which is a cool effect right so that is uh, something you can try as well there are a lot more things as i mentioned for you to try once you're done creating all the responsive breakpoints and you feel that everything is working right all you have to do is click on publish so you can see that this is your custom subdomain that they have provided and once you tap on this link this opens up on a new page and as you can see the website seems to be working really good the header is sticking to the top and a sticky section this also works the animation that we created everything works well right so there are certainly some issues with the padding and stuff like that which basically needs more time for you to sit on it fix all the breakpoints so let's also try the responsive layout so i'm just going to change this to the responsive view so let's see how the responsive works so the response also seems to work really well, right? So definitely there are certain issues which need a little more tweaking, but definitely this is an amazing thing that we achieved just in a few minutes. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So to summarize, we went from a static design in Figma to a live interactive website in Framer. We prepared our designs, exported the sections one by one, added interactions and created animations. And finally, we have this live interactive website. A big shout out to Framer for sponsoring this video. They have also been very kind to give us a special coupon code for all of you guys. So it's a 25% off on the first three months of mini and basic plans on Framer. So don't forget to use the design extreme code at the checkout. So the code, you can get it from the description or it's somewhere on the screen right here. And if you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.